lady, what are you up to? <laughs> hey, Sandra. Well, I'm just checking up on leads and I'm about ready to call some clients and see how they're enjoying their newly organized spaces. What is that? An organized space? Oh, we're gonna talk a lot about that today. We are major organizers, San Antonio, and we make organizing fun, we get the job done, and we don't judge anyone. <laughs> No se equivoca. Humans make mistakes. Porque recordemos que todos somos humanos. An amazing person, creative, and a major, major you call it? Major, major, major organizer. Major organizer. And there we have one of her. Hi. Hi. That's <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> Jessica right here. And we're gonna find out about what this is all about. And let me tell you, all you home-based lady, or if you desire to work from home, Maybe you can get some ideas from this. So tell us a little bit more about you. Sure. Well, uh, my name is Melissa Smith and I just moved to San Antonio about three years ago and from Portland, Oregon, where mm. it's very wet and green and I've traded the rain for the sunshine. I love San Antonio. It's the best place we've ever lived. Um, and after being a stay at home mom for a few years when we first got here, I decided I was bored. My kids were older, they weren't needing me as much, and um, was looking for something to do. And everybody has always told me that I should be a professional organizer. Oh. And I thought, can't make money <laughs> doing that. I do it because I love it, because it's fun. I have fun doing it for my family and friends and in my own home. And so one day I was on the internet and found this amazing opportunity to franchise with a company that I identified with mm -hmm. and within a very short period of time I was the franchise owner of major organizer San Antonio. Wow. wow. Yes. But but like what what was one of the first steps that you have to take in order to do this? Because a lot of people they have great ideas mm -hmm. but no implementation. Mm -hmm. How was it that you were able to start that? Well I think it all starts about with your passion. What you're passionate about. You, I didn't want, I, I've been in a lot of careers. I've been in retail management, hospitality management, human resources. All of these <laughs> things required me to be organized. Mm -hmm. So at the, at the heart of what I'd always done was something that I was truly passionate about. And so when I decided to go back to work, I wanted to make sure there was something that I was gonna, I was gonna find meaning in, that was gonna fulfill me and make That's me right. happy and serve a higher purpose. And when I found the opportunity, I had that moment, and you know this moment, I had tears just streaming down my face. It was like, it was my, my calling. I knew that I had found my passion and, and where I could use my gifts to help serve others in ways that I have found helpful myself. And so I think first and foremost is, Finding what you're passionate about, you know. Tell I, those women there. Tell them directly. Make sure it's something you're passionate about. I fully support women-owned businesses. That's right. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Entrepreneur, we got your back, ladies. <laughs> but if you're not passionate about it, it's going to become more like a job. Yes. And at this point in my life, girl, I needed to have passion uh, for what I do. And yeah, I mean, you you hit it right on the nail about passion. I mean, I love what I do. You people know I love talking. <laughs> so I am definitely passionate about this. And when I came into her home office today, I was passionate about what I saw. Like everything, you know, the way she had this place organized. I'm sorry, but if you want to see more, you got to connect with her, okay? You got to get a visit, like real visit with her. But this place, is, uh, it smells good. It feels comfortable. I feel I can jump on any of the couches and have so much 
fun. I'm, I'm in front, I'm sitting right here, and the kitchen is over there, and it's just amazing. You know, these HD TV, blah, 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 blah. No, they got nothing on Melissa, nothing. And I am, she didn't pay me to say this, I'm gonna tell you. It's just what I see, like, you know, they say first impression is what count. This is like first, second, third, fourth, whatever impression. It's just amazing, seriously. I stand on every place in this place, I wish you can see it, but I'm not gonna show all of you. You gotta connect with her. She does have a website and she's on Facebook and all that, but you know, you wanna see more, you need to connect with Melissa. But let, let's continue because you know, I can talk forever. <laughs> and we're gonna be having a pillow fight jumping on my couch later, just so Ooh! you know. Oh, Melissa, Jessica. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. we have Jessica, and she, while we are actually talking, you know, mm -hmm. a little gossiping here and there, um, <laughs> then she's going to be doing some stuff. So if you can, also look at her while we are chit chatting. <laughs> so what is she going to be doing? So what, is, what <laughs> Jessica is going to be working on is a junk drawer, and I'm going to wrap you out. You Sandra. all have them. You yeah, know yeah, it. everybody has one, even Sandra. getting organized and this is something that any of y'all can do at home um, and we recommend tackling a small area and we chose a junk drawer just because it's something everybody has and if you're unsure how to get started this is a great place to start so it first starts by we have three phases the first one is picture it how do you want the space or the drawer or a room to function? Um, create that vision. Do you want it to feel warm and welcoming? Do you want it to be utilitarian or functional? Obviously talking about a room and a space. In the drawer, creating the vision of how or what items you want to have in it. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is the plan it stage. And a lot of people skip over this step as well as the first step, the, the uh, picture it phase but it's important because you need to know what's gonna go in there you know and speaking specifically to a junk drawer mm -hmm. how do you want that junk drawer to per to serve you um, usually people have you a are lot a of true items organizer. I am girl she is, you I know, am. She's talking right now but I have never put any thought about no draw <laughs> I either take everything out of the drawer put it in a bag and throw it away and then start over <laughs> And that leads us to what Jessica is doing right now, which is our STEPS. And STEPS is an acronym for um, the first of the letter is S, which is SORT, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to take everything out and sort it into like categories. Okay. And what I mean by like categories is what that means to you. So it can okay. be tools, it can be um, paper, it can be gift wrapping it can be you know sh oftentimes people have straws and napkins and the little you know condiments that come home from you know or electronic cables and cords and stuff so you just sort all of that stuff into all of its individual categories and then at that point you do what we call treasuring okay and this is where you decide what you're going to keep in that drawer okay mm -hmm. a lot of times junk drawers are really just full of stuff that has another home but we just haven't put it in its home mm -hmm. and so by getting rid of all of those things that you no longer want to keep or putting them in their proper home or maybe finding a better place for it that will then help you decide how to set up your junk drawer 
Um, the next step is um, establishing um, systems. So when we are establishing homes, so when we look at you know, like we were talking about, if this is gonna go here, this is gonna go there. Then you move on to the, what is it, Jessica? The container strategy. Then you put those things into place. Oftentimes, people do that first, and that's wrong. When we go and work with clients, they always say, oh, should I go buy a bunch of bins? And we're like, no, <laughs> don't buy anything. Nothing. Don't buy anything, because you probably already have items that can be repurposed and reused in ways. And we're all about saving y'all money because I'm on a budget. I don't know about you, yeah. Sandra, you on a budget? Always on a budget. Always on, Always a, budget. on a budget. And so we can get creative with coming up with solutions in any area for any kind of storage and organization. And so what Jessica is doing is using a variety of different containers that we have to then place the items in the junk drawer that will keep it tidy and organized. Once something has a home, once there's a system in place, everybody can maintain it. It's pretty easy to yeah. do. It does take a little bit of extra time on our parts to maintain a new system because it might take, you know, an extra three or four seconds to put that item back where it goes. But even if life happens, you know, yeah. Jess and I are busy moms. We got three active kiddos. Mm -hmm. If we get behind on stuff and I hate to say it, but it does happen. <laughs> I know. Life happens. Then we, because things have a home, it's a lot quicker to put it back in its home when it does get a little out of control. So, yeah. That is really awesome. So, are we ready to see something? We're ready to see something. So, for one thing, she had Band-Aids and Neosporin and uh, lip gloss that does not belong in the junk drawer. Okay. Okay, so I would put these in the bathroom or wherever her medicine cabinet is. Um, everybody has these sauces. That <laughs> Trash. I got ketchup, <laughs> and the sauce, and I got what, the, the soy sauce. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, uh, again, these are just things that are, are going to have to go in another place. They are going to go in the garage, they're going to go um, in the pantry. Um, owner's manuals, we don't need them. That's we right. don't need them. We don't really read them. We no. don't read them, <laughs> and if you need the information, it's online. Mm -hmm. So, basically, what is in the junk drawer. Okay, let me get uh -huh. a picture of that. I'm gonna get a picture. <laughs> what am I gonna get? Okay, got it over there. No, you can get that on there. Okay, so we have our office supplies in one. Business cards, because you might need these if you want to call a plumber or something. And then I put these in here, so there's rubber bands, clips, and then if you need to mail something, you have your address labels and envelopes. This is what belongs in the junk drawer, awesome. not this other stuff. Okay. <laughs> so your ketchup, ladies, your ketchup, get rid of it. Get rid of it. <laughs> it's trash! No, it's <laughs> well, Jessica's gonna share a couple of tips to help you continue to stay organized after you've gotten organized. Jess? So one of the things we tell our clients is you've gotta stop the incoming. So we all know we get that junk mail that comes in constantly. Uh -huh. There are websites that you can subscribe to that will help you alleviate that junk mail. Mm -hmm. Also, overbuying. You know, we don't need to buy 150 granola bars at Costco because it was $9.99. <laughs> if you don't have the space for it, you don't need to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are major organizers, San Antonio, and we make organizing fun. fun. We get the job done, and, and we don't judge anyone! <laughs> Thank you, ladies. I hope that you connect with Jessica and Melissa. This is awesome women, their energy. This is not fake. No. This is real. Okay? So you, if you people thought I was the only crazy person, I am not. Okay? Especially in San Antonio. So if you're in the San Antonio area and you need to get organized, which let me tell you, you need to. We can help you. We can do that. That's right. Okay. Bye bye everybody. Bye. bye.
You know, I know that when I, com- I accomplish a goal, I get so excited, I can't even talk. I know that I did everything that I had to do, even when it was hard. I decided I got to get up. I got to take at least five minutes to do what I need to do. I have to do this task. It might not seem important at the moment, but it is something that I need to do, then I must do it. And then I feel so confident and so powerful that I'm ready to tackle everything. How many times did we lose focus of something and decided that, you know, I'm not going to do that right now. I, I, you know, I like to take my time to accomplish things because I do better under pressure. <laughs> Have you ever heard that excuse before? I do better under pressure. Or I am a nothing or all kind of guy. Yes, I had a friend that told me that I am an all or nothing kind of guy. That's what he said. And I asked him, so what does that mean? He said, well, when I decide to do something, I go in all the way. And when I don't decide to do it, is you know, I don't do anything. Well, um... Sometimes when we want to accomplish our goals, we are going to get in that stage that we don't feel like doing it. But because we have a goal, because we have a purpose, we need to move forward. We need to take action, even at that moment that we do not feel like taking action. And that is what procrastinators do. They are one of the best people in making excuses. And the excuses sound so good that you might tell them, you're right, you're right, don't do it. But the reality is, is that if you know that you have to do it and you don't do it, you're a procrastinator. And you can only take control of your life when you decided that your purpose, your mission is important. It's more important than watching TV. It's more important than sitting around and being lazy. And it's more important than making excuses. Don't forget that if you're an expert in a particular area, I want to hear from you. I want you to share your story. I want you to share your voice right here on En Vivo Life. And if you want me to be the host of your event, also get in touch with me. Info at EnVivoAssociate.com Again, that is info at EnVivoAssociate.com Whatever topic you want me to talk about, except politics. But I'm willing and I am able to talk about everything that you want to talk about. No politics. But don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe here on Envivo Live. Bye-bye now.